At the dawn of the 20th century, scientists and progressive thinkers believed that they had the solution to society's ills, eugenics. They sought to breed better humans with social Darwinism, viewing upper-class white people as the sole model of good genetics. This led to laws that sought to eliminate undesirable people through various means, especially reproductive sterilization. Put Me Back Like They Found Me centers the stories of cis female survivors of forced sterilization in the United States. I embroider their portraits as a nod to domestic labor, with thread as a metaphor for life. For living survivors, the work is a collaboration between the women and myself. Each portrait contains a chosen element that has significance in their lives. Hospital gowns display painted texts that focus on various survivors and the sufferings that they have endured. Carrie Buck was a test case for choosing vulnerable, marginalized people who were deemed unfit. Buck was raped at age 17 by a member of her foster family and gave birth out of wedlock, leading to her institutionalization. Her trauma intensified when her case was selected to go before the Supreme Court in 1927, which she lost and was subsequently sterilized. Many states created eugenics boards, where mostly institutionalized people were sterilized, often for the simple offense of being poor, disabled, or in the case of women, deemed promiscuous, whether true or not. California, my birth state, is guilty of sterilizing so many people that Nazi Germany imitated their methods to begin eliminating entire populations. After World War II, states targeted specific communities of color to maintain a white majority. In the South, black women were so impacted that they called the procedure a Mississippi appendectomy. Nationally, Native women were sterilized so much that the future existence of several indigenous nations is at risk. Latinas in California were seen as a population threat. During the 1960s and 70s, doctors at USC LA County Hospital sterilized these women without their knowledge or coerced them through lies. One such woman was Melvina Hernandez, whose already traumatic life was amplified when she was sterilized after giving birth to her son. Unaware she had been sterilized, Melvina had an IUD put in. Melvina's case was part of lawsuits filed against the hospital, but the judge still found in favor of the hospital doctors. Melvina remained resilient through her loss and is a strong presence in her grandson's life. It's hard to know how many people have been sterilized, partly because private doctors and institutions would not tell their patients about the extraneous surgeries that they were performing. In 1972, Mithra Ratney was a librarian at Washington State University while her husband worked on his Fulbright. The excitement about their first and only child was quickly extinguished when her doctor performed a coercive hysterectomy. As new immigrants from Sri Lanka scared of their visas being revoked, they could not report the doctor to the police. Mithra lives with her daughter's family, and she's shown here with her granddaughters as a nod to her hope for the future. Through several movements that fought for reproductive rights, 
The era of sterilization boards eventually came to an end, leaving in their wake a wound that has never fully healed. But the past is not just present, it never left. California was investigated in 2014 for sterilizing incarcerated women without adequate consent. Over the past few decades, judges have pushed sterilization to defendants to mitigate their sentences. Donald Trump has often cited superior genes while enacting white supremacist laws and executive orders that reinvigorated eugenics for the 21st century. This includes the atrocious sterilizations of detained women in ICE concentration camps. These stories are reminders that each eugenicist's belief or law has tragic costs. We as a society owe these survivors and their memories our care and demand for justice, in addition to finally ending these cruel violations for present and future generations. Thank you.